Since 1931, $399 million has been raised by the Good Friday Appeal to support brave kids at the Royal Children's Hospital. Fundraising happens through so many wonderful activities in the community, from fun runs, bake sales, right up to an annual all-day telethon. With this great charity, so many people want to help, but in 2020, on their 89th year, COVID hits, our city becomes the most locked down city of the world, and none of the events can happen. So Good Friday Appeal worked with XWP to focus fundraising energy on their digital presence. They managed to more than double the visits to their site on Appeal Day and raise the funds needed to support the hospital. Tonight I have the pleasure to speak with the Executive Director of Good Friday Appeal, Rebecca Cowan. Good evening and welcome to the XWP Tonight Show. Good evening, Rebecca. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Oh, thank you, Amit. It's great to be here tonight. With the 90-year anniversary, it must have been a massive year for the Good Friday Appeal and working for such an awesome charity. What would you say are you know a particular highlight for the Good Friday Appeal for this year? Yeah, look, it is incredible. 90 years of the Good Friday Appeal. Um, and it really represents 90 years of the community giving so generously to support sick children. So for me, this was my first year working on the Good Friday Appeal. So I feel very fortunate to have been part of the 90 years, and there were so many highlights. Um, I think after the year that we've had coming out of COVID and actually being able to have an appeal, um, face-to-face fundraising, a lot of our events returned even though, they, even though they were adapted, it was just to see the heart and the essence of what the appeal is about. And it's about people caring about others and giving back. So that was probably my highlight, seeing that in action and seeing all the hard work of so many come together on that particular day and um, raise a lot of money for the Royal Children's Hospital. What was the the impact of COVID and lockdowns and all that on the Good Friday Appeals fundraising activities? Yeah, look, we're based around, you know, from 90 years ago when it first started, it was with people collecting coins and cash in, in tins and um, holding fundraisers and the CFA, getting their fire trucks and driving through the streets. So that's what it's predominantly been known about, known of. And um, we're really proud of that when people come together to do that. A lot of that got cancelled. So all of a sudden, like every other business, we were adapting, we were pivoting that word that everyone knows. Um, we were being agile as we could just to ensure that depending on the scenario and the restrictions of that time that we were set up and prepared. So I think like many businesses, we had sort of three different scenario plans going on at any one time. Um, and, you know, things like restrictions, social distancing and cashless have been a big impact. So we wanted to, for us, it's all about still continuing to do the trad- traditional ways of fundraising, but how do we bring digital into the piece and really maximise the digital channels? So if COVID does hit us again and we're locked down, um, how we are, we can still have um, a really great Good Friday appeal. With with that, can I ask, um, you know, when you hit all these um, this craziness of the, the COVID lockdowns and all that, why did you choose at that time to rebuild the Good Friday Appeal website? Yeah, look, for a couple of reasons. Our our website had served its purpose for a period of time, but it was definitely time to rebuild. Um, We wanted to ensure that it was modern, um, simple as well, and a big focus, obviously, the user experience to ensure that we can maximise and really drive donations. We needed it to be as simple as possible for our donors to when they went to our website, we'd be able to find out exactly what we do, how we do it, but also the impact. And then if they are moved by what we do and our why, then that they, um, they, they can easily donate as well. So it was very much around that simplifying, streamlining and automating our processes. Also from a back end, um, it was quite clunky, our old system. And we have limited resources in our team. We're a not-for-profit. We don't have, you know, extra capability or capacity. So we wanted it to be as um, automated, as simple as possible for the team to be able to drive and utilise it to its uh, to its full potential. For your site, you get the majority, like most of your activity, all that energy, like into one day. Like what's it like having so much energy of your organisation focused towards one day of the year? it's um, It keeps us on our toes and, um, you know, it keeps us very busy as well. We're doing, throughout the year, we're doing a lot of planning, we're reviewing, we're building systems um, and especially over the last two years, it's been very much around 
digital transformation as well where we can. Well, for XWP, this really was a, a learning experience because for us, we hadn't done a lot of work with uh, charities before. And I, I mentioned that to you starting up. Our, our experience was really with more commercial for-profit organizations. And my alignment always is to figure out what is their business uh, objectives and to connect to that. So for example, if it's a uh, publisher that wants to get more ad revenue, um, you know, how can we change the design? How can we improve the performance? How can we get their ranking higher? How can we get more money to their site? Whatever they're doing, how can we get um, a greatest return on investment? For us, this was really quite exciting um, to change and put that energy towards how can we support a charity to get the most number of awareness, the most uh, you know donations and all that. What, what was your experience, I guess, feedback to us uh, for working with XWP? Yeah, I suppose I'd look at, yeah, I'd flip it around from our side as well. So when we met you, you and the team, when you were in very good hands, uh, that's first thing. And what was really appealing was that you'd had a lot of experience working with big corporations, big brands. Um, and as I mentioned before, we don't have the luxury of having um, a lot of resources, unfortunately. I'd love to have more, but we just don't. We don't necessarily have all the digital skills in-house. So it was really important that we partnered with someone who had the solid experience and background but really wanted to build a partnership with us. And that's something that you, you know, when we met for the first time, that you made that really, really clear. It was about, yes, let's build the website, but then how can we work with you in a true partnership uh, perspective and really maximise what the Good Friday Appeal can do um, and then obviously, you know, it's a win-win for both organisations and we've done that, we've built the website and now it's looking at, we've just rebuilt the uh, donation page as well and, um, you know, we streamed for the first time the telethon on our website, which was a brilliant idea from yourself and there's always other things that you're bringing into play um, and you're very much focused as an organisation on best practice, on research um, and that great experience. So, we feel we can learn a lot um, from the work that you're doing with your other partners and you're able to bring those insights into the work that we're doing. So it's just invaluable for us. Thinking about that, I'm very curious from a perspective of a charity, how important is innovation um, for, for your future? I feel if we're not innovating and we're not doing things differently and we're not trying and testing new things where possible, we'll, we'll, we can either, you know, one or two things, you'll stay the same or we could be left behind. And our donors and supporters, they expect the same digital experience from a Good Friday appeal as they do from any, you know, any online business that they're purchasing things from. So we need to keep up with innovation. We need to keep up with technology um, which can be challenging because, as we know, it's constantly evolving and to keep up with those changes. So for us, it's about being really clear on our strategy, simplifying our solution um, and knowing what it's one that we can um, implement and it can continue to be, we can continue to enhance it and evolve, um, evolve it over time as well. Uh, unfortunately, we don't. We can't just keep building things um, and testing it. It's got to be part of our, our architecture and, and our strategy, which is... Um, we're pretty clear on what that is and, and part of it's because we're working with some really good partners like XWP to help us identify that roadmap forward. I must say, having attended the uh, telethon this year and seeing the volunteers, the people that contribute to this amazing charity, that's where it all is. Like we'll, we'll do everything we can to make it as easy as possible and reduce the friction to uh, get people to connect with the charity. But the people love this charity that's been around for 90 years. And, and I think it's it's just amazing. And we're, we're proud to be uh, to play a part in it all. Oh, thank you, Amit. And, and just on that, it is, it's our volunteers. I mean, there's generations of volunteers. Um, there's, you know, I'm, on Good Friday, I met people who have been volunteering 50 years in our money counting room. And, yeah, you can introduce all the innovation and technology, but at the end of the day, it comes back to people and it comes back to connections and it comes back to community. And we know the community care about sick children and they care about the hospitals. So for us, it's about still retaining and maintaining those beautiful relationships that we have and then bringing that innovation in. So thank you to you and your wonderful team. And, yeah, we look forward to continuing to work with you into the future. Rebecca, thank you so much for your time today. And for those of you who are watching this, if you want to donate and support this amazing charity, uh, please go to goodfridayappeal.com.au uh, and, uh, and donate and support it. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.